Greetings YouTube, Sebastian here, and today I will be looking at uh, Massive X. Um, it's just released a few weeks ago, and I will be giving my honest opinions, and uh, we'll be looking at some of the features. I will not be playing any presets in this video. I think there's a lot more videos that play presets and uh, I just want to get in depth in the instrument. Alright, so Massive X for me is kind of an underwhelming disappointment. Um, that's not to say there's no bad things, no good things about Massive X. Because there is some good things. For instance, we got this routing tab, which is really cool. You can uh, grab oscillators. You can route them. Um, and you can do all this fancy routing, which is really cool. But uh, there is things that I don't really like. Uh, one of them is how these... Uh, performers are kind of set up it's it's just like I think serum uh, in terms of its uh, LFOs has a lot more to offer than this and uh, I just think that these are a bit uh, convoluted in terms of features like the grid size like for somebody just like learning how to use Massive X, this is like really confusing, and and there's really no like indication on how to actually like bring down the the grid, and it's it's really confusing. Another thing I really don't like is these envelopes right here, like they don't update if you. If you move any of these knobs right here, you don't get to see it update, and uh, you don't get to see the shape uh, show what you're really doing in here, and it's kind of, I mean, it's 2019, why aren't these, like, updating the shape down there? Like, you know, it's not very v visual with what you're doing. And I'm sure there's updates to address this in the future. Another thing that kind of bugs me is this uh, decay right here. Kind of slightly affects the the release. It's kind of weird, but I'm going to get a sign right here. Bring this up an octave. And oh, I gotta route it into here. So if we go to our envelope, bring this so saying down all the way. The release is basically neutered by this uh, this decay knob right here, and any other synthesizers I've really used, such as Silent or uh, or Serum, this is not an issue. Like it kind of does it a little bit when you have it full up. But yeah, that's another issue I kind of have with it. Um, another issue I have with Massive X is there is no way to load or even add your own wavetables. Like, I think that maybe coming down the road, they have like some sort of roadmap of updates for this, but... Uh, that's kind of, you know, we're, we're kind of tied to only these waveforms right here and these tables. Some of these are not even wavetables. Some of them are just static waveforms like this banana right here. It doesn't even have any additional cycles to it. 
but this uh, banana uh, wave table has uh, has a purpose. So we got all these like wave modes right here, wave table modes. It'd be like your uh, your warps in Serum or the spectrum in OG Massive. So you can add a uh, we can add a gorilla right here, and it kind of makes sense. The banana uh, wavetable is for the gorilla. And this is good for like making those really EDM kind of dubstep rhythm. Uh, housey kind of sounds. Um, another thing is Massive X doesn't have no manual. There's no fucking manual at all on online. There's no manual. So you, it, it's sink and swim. You don't like. You don't get to like learn how. The routing works. You have to learn all this without a manual. And I mean, if you know how modular synthesizers work, you're gonna you're gonna know what to do. But if people come here from Silent or Spire or uh, some other synth, they're gonna be confused. They're, Why am I not getting sound? You know. They're, but you know it. Once you finally get the hang of it, I mean, it's pretty easy. And uh, the one thing that kind of bugs me is this this uh, initialized patch. Like once you edit edit the initialized patch, and you click on it again because you want to reset the instrument, you have to literally click another patch and then click that again because it won't it won't initialize the patch. It's it. it it's not very uh, versatile in that matter. It's it's not really uh, user friendly. Um, some of the things I do like, I do like these wave shape modes a lot. Like I like this jitter one too. Like it's just really fun to mess around with. Let's just go here and put on our jitter mode. This is really cool to make like leads and like weird pads and stuff. And you may say, uh, what about the wavetables? Well, the wavetables are pretty cool. You get We got a lot of them. It's just a shame we can't add our own. Like we got some nice... Some nice textures. And you know, we also got these uh, these remastered uh, tables from the original Massive. Which is cool. And it does visualize and kind of show the cycles going through the wavetables. And I expect them to remaster all the other wavetables and updates from the original Massive. One thing, another thing I do like is this like, uh, this dedicated uh, phase modulation and, or, uh, uh, yeah, phase modulation, uh, oscillator down here so this is nice for getting really na nasty tones with and you can actually go below one and it goes to fractions like half half the harmonic 
And this is cool for making, you know, those EDM kind of sounds. Um, so let's go and look at more stuff to complain about. Um, these effects right here. The effects are really good. They're top quality, nice sounding effects. They probably, um, they can probably rival Tone 2's effects in Electra and Icarus. Like, these effects sound really good. And we got a bunch of different uh, modes for reverbs. We got this fat, fat synth that I like. get a little bit of unison in here. And it, it sounds good. We, we also got these weird ones, like non-linear. Just basically a reverse, like, slope. Reverb. And you can really, like, you can add delay to the reverb. And yes, uh, we got this thing called Wonderlust, which is really weird. And as for other ones, we got the Dimension Expander, which is back. And we got uh, four different modes now. Which is really cool. Um, we have an equalizer. Of, the flanger is really, really nice for like really bassy kind of things. So we can bring this down to about twenty four. Okay. And you can like modulate this with like an LFO, so we'll do, yeah, we'll do the feedback. And you get all these different like modes in verse. You get these like different types, so like. And the amount. And we can make this, uh. We can turn this. I don't really know what that button does because we don't got no fucking manual yet. Um, we do have uh, a positive and negative uh, polarities. So you can use this like it's a, uh, a flange filter kind of. Which is really cool. Um, the filter sections actually has some really nice uh, filters. I really do like this Creek filter. I think it's the uh, I think it's the successor to the Scream filter. And you get different flavors of it. And, I mean, you can get really weird with these, uh, with these, uh, performers down here in these envelopes. I like, I, I just like making my own LFOs this way, and I'll go to, um, go to here, and then I'll set this to key lunch, so it resets every time you use it, so we can, uh, Assign this to our filter. And we can actually, you know, set this to our feedback if we want. So, uh, 
So yeah, there's some cool things you can do with Massive X. It, it, it has some really cool, uh, neat things you can do. Um, the, but you only get three effect slots right here. You, you got all these effects, but you only get three slots. So we can only have three effects at a time. And this is like your distortion kind of thing. We can add amps down here, like California. We got distortion. So yeah, there is there is definitely some cool cool things you can do with Massive X. Um, the noises are really cool. Like they sound really really good. And you guessed right, we cannot add our own noises. But the noises that Massive X comes with are really cool. So yeah, you can really like really go crazy with these weird noises. We got these friction based noises. Which is just basically uh, fully samples. And one of my favorite things about Massive X is the comb filter. The comb filter is probably one of the best sounding comb filters I've heard. Um, let's go here and uh, we'll have our noise go through our comb filter. Uh, one one thing that's really cool you can do is you can uh, you have these insert effects kind of like massive the original one so you can have like this uh, a bit crusher a utility a frequency shifter But there's this thing called Anima, which I really like. It's it's some pitch kind of comb effect thing. So you can do some cool stuff with that. So another thing I kind of want to touch on is uh, people are saying that Massive X has bad aliasing, and um, I think it's not really aliasing. I think it's actually like added harmonics to uh, Massive X. Hold on a minute. Um, we we'll get pro -Q So these right here, people are saying that's aliasing. I don't really believe it is. I think it's just added character to the oscillator because if we go to this uh, harmonic filter right here, we can bring it down and those extra uh, harmonics right there are gone. 
and they're not really uh, inharmonic from each other, meaning that A-listing usually has inharmonic uh, harmonics that's kind of more noisy and harsh to the ear. And I don't believe that that's really what's going on here. Another thing I really want to touch on in this video is how you can use an LFO as an oscillator. Yeah, LFO1. So we'll go to oscillator. Yes, I believe this is actually aliasing, which they should add. In my opinion, they should add a uh, a band limit uh, here, kind of like uh, Sadowick and Echo Soundworks have said. They should add some sort of like band limited waveform right here, and uh, they should actually add where the rate is a way to like quantize this to the pitch so we can see like what semitones or what what a uh, sense or fine tune it goes to that way we know that it's in key with our other oscillators but this is really cool i like it it but it a list is pretty bad and i think they'll fix it um Next thing I want to talk about is Massive X isn't a bad synth at all. Like, it it's not bad. It's just, I don't feel like it was, you know, finished. I don't feel like it was, you know, ready to be dropped on us. It sounds good. It uh, It's got a lot of neat features. But there's a lot of things that I'm disappointed with. Um, and these wave shape modes are not one of those. I love these. These are really cool. So this is basically just a Ben mode. With some basic phase distortion stuff. With and there's a lot of you can do with the wave shape modes. Warp. The switcher uh, LFO is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I go over more of the filters. The Blue Monarch is is basically the remastered some of the remastered filters from the regular massive with I think some analog circuitry uh, algorithm going on I don't know why they called it blue monarch but okay um You can actually add FM to this too. So yeah, you can make all the whoops you want to with this. 
And your question may be, well, is it worth the asking price? Is Massive X uh, worth getting? I'd say no. I'd say your biggest bet is to wait. Now, if if you're still rolling on a complete twelve or complete ten, like I was before I upgraded, and you want to get Reactor Six, and you want to get Contact Six, and you want to get some of those new effect plugins, and uh, you want to get some, you want to get Form. Form's really cool. I'd say yeah, you can upgrade for that. I'd upgrade for that. But if you're wanting to upgrade just to get your hands on Massive X, I'd say wait. Wait till they've updated it to the point where, you know, it adds something new to your arsenal. If if you're I mean, if you're using mass massive uh the original massive or, you know, serum pigments, Icarus, um, Synth Master or Falcon or any of those other wavetable synths, I, I don't think you really need Massive X, to be honest with you. And, you know, with Phase Plant that just came out, you know, I think I think they they just need to add some new stuff to Massive X. You know, it's 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 not a bad synth. It you know, it it's the new kid on a block that everybody wants to p poke and and beat at, you know, but it's not a bad synth. It's it's just underwhelming. It, that's not to say that you cannot get some cool sounds out of it. That it doesn't have some cool features. Well, like it definitely does. I'm not gonna lie, but I just think that you should wait till you know it matures a little bit with some updates and. Uh, if you have like like I said any of those since I mentioned there's really no need to get it like you're just wasting money in my opinion but anyway that is my honest opinion on Massive X you can take it or leave it it's my opinion um we'll be having some more videos come out uh after this I might do more stuff on Massive X. I do want to get this phase plant video done and uh yeah thanks for watching my video and I appreciate the support and uh I hope you have a fantastic day.